everyone in, from college age to one year old know the sound of my voice. Hey, Ham, look, I'm Picasso. I don't get it. You uncultured swine. That was really the voice of Cliff Clavin. I was like, hey, uh, how you doing? At the very beginning, nobody had ever heard of Pixar. When they asked me to do the voice of the pig, I said, absolutely. It sounds like fun. And then when I started working with them, I said, boy, they do all the heavy lifting. You know, the actor really doesn't have much to do. All you really do is listen to what they tell you. Very simple. They've been working on the script three years. So they know every nuance, every sigh, every laugh, every chortle. We're on the fourth Toy Story now. Well, each Toy Story was better than the last one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present Mantel the Magnificent and his lovely assistant, Gypsy! P.T. Flea. It's just so avaricious that I just, it's funny. He's just so excited about making a buck. It's just, and, and, but obviously missing every other important thing in his life. But uh, I, it's a, it is lovable at the same time, and he was always on the edge. <laughs> Can you believe that? Do I look abominable to you? Pixar set a standard that not only do you have to reach, you have to surpass it. So they'll never rest on their laurels. And again, that was established in the very beginning, and it still holds true today. Hey, hey, you like impressions? Mm -hmm. Okay, just like in rehearsals, gentlemen. When you see like a big, you know, bait ball of fish, they'll turn at the same time. How does that happen? The way it is in nature, there's got to be a communication because they all travel as one body. And so I just look at it as one body. I don't look at it as how many fish. Hey, kid, congrats on the tie. I don't want to talk about it. Come on, let's go, Mac. Saddle up. My dad drove a Mack truck. And then later on, I found out that uh, that's why they had that character be a Mack truck and not a Kenworth or something else. Uh, uh John. Eva? Uh, no. John. That was John. That was fairly easy. But his, I guess, girlfriend was Mary. And so it was almost up to them to start another civilization, the, the Adam and Eve of another era. And we're, and we're getting to that, where that's, you know, with them on their chaise lounges that hover, the hovering chairs with the drinks. And boy, we're close to that. What do you say to that? <laughs> Take that as a no, then. For me, the uh, uh, the ultimate was up. Here you got a story of an 80-year-old guy whose house floats away with balloons with a Korean Cub Scout. And you think, well, who's going to want? There they go again. First 10 minutes, no dialogue, and you're bawling your eyes out. They want to announce the arrival of the large Put my boot in my head. Because I lived over there for years. And uh, I used to perform at the Edinburgh Festival. So yeah, so I knew the Scottish accent. So the difference between an Edinburgh accent and the Glaswegian accent. And But anyway, yeah, so I, I enjoyed that. All right, here you go. Your new expanded console is up and running. I'm a tinkerer all my life. I've been a carpenter. So that obviously stuck with me, so I still enjoy that. So that's what Fritz is in Inside Out. Next. Your photos of your dentist, Brenda. Enjoy your visit. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> but it takes your breath away, the artistry of it. You can cut any frame out and hang it on your living room wall. It's a work of art. I always beneath you, but nothing is beneath me. I am the underminer. I, yeah, the underminer, I just try to put gravel and dirt in his voice because he's lives underground. And I was very happy to see that the underminer wasn't killed in the second Incredibles. He escapes in the beginning. The thing I liked about the underminer is that he was, uh, <laughs> he lived in dirt. And, and uh, I just, I loved, uh, as a kid, I loved being out there in the dirt. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. 